Hello everyone. Uh, today I will be presenting Magic Tune, uh, which is a tool that enables children, youngsters, to create uh, drawings and create three D images, like three D models, out of these drawings. Uh, so the paper's title is Magic Tune: A Two D to Three D Creative Cartoon Modeling System with Mobile AR. Um, so. As I was saying, this is an augmented reality system, which is on mobile devices that children can use. And what they do is they actually sketch some uh, cartoons on actual paper. And then these actual cartoon drawings are then captured by the tool. And the tool automatically generates a 3D model. And you can actually put multiple drawings uh, onto the uh, capturing so that you can actually create a scene out of it. So there's obviously some related work with this. Uh, there are like, for example, there are like uh, existing AR coloring apps already. One notable one is like Disney's uh, color and play uh, tool, which was a paper by Magnanat and uh, their alumni at 2015. Uh, the difference between this tool and what I'm presenting today is this tool actually uses existing 2D templates and the children just get to color them. So it's kind of like an actual coloring book and 3D models uh, that uh, map to these 2D uh, coloring templates are also manually created by uh, some um, creators rather than automatic generation. Uh, there are also some other uh, related tools like uh, these group can be referred to as like sketch based modeling systems. Maybe the most famous one is Teddy, which is a very old but very effective tool. Uh, it is by Igarashi and their alumni, uh, which was submitted back in 1999. And Shape Shop and Fiber Mesh are also relatively similar to Teddy. So what these tools do is it actually gives you an, uh, so this has nothing to do with like physical interaction, first of all, these tools. So it is a virtual environment, kind of like a paint, but where you get to draw your uh, lines in a 3D environment. It obviously simplifies the modeling pipeline, but it is quite complicated for kids to use. So let's talk about the workflow of the Magic Tune itself. So obviously it first starts with uh, creating the input cartoon. So the kid creates, uh, uh, it sketches and colors a cartoon drawing as can be seen at A, uh, and then uses Magic Tune app to capture that as an image through the camera. And then that uh, image is fed to a, a module called Model Creator. Uh, the Model Creator basically splits the cartoon image into several regions based on the dark edges because cartoon drawings define shapes and contours with dark edges. Uh, and then it actually generates a 3D inflated mesh using these regions. Uh, and finally attaches this 3D model, uh, attaches, sorry, attaches the texture, texture that, that is initially drawn by the kid into this 3D model. And finally, obviously, it renders it in the augmented reality environment. Um, a single, so this is how a single model is created. Uh, there's also this concept called an interactive model editor, which is on the Magic Tune app itself. And this app uh, enables you to do some several very intuitive operations like translation, rotation, and scaling using some touch gestures. So it is very intuitive for kids to use. You can also double tap on a model to copy it. And further down in the presentation, we will see you can even add animations to existing models uh, where the system uses very simple interpolation to make the animation happen. And uh, as I was saying, you can actually put multiple drawings on the scene that you're capturing. And when you take the picture with your camera, you can actually get to use all these different models to create a more sophisticated scene. So let's first talk about the initial module, which is the model creator. 
a model creator starts this process by this process called segmentation. So first of all, the image, uh, the RGB image, so red, green, blue image is converted to HSV, which is hue, saturation and value uh, because saturation better captures the edges rather than the RGB representation. And then they apply an adaptive threshold algorithm to the saturation channel where they select as certain pixels that are above a threshold. Uh, so the darker regions are considered uh, the as the edges of the sketch, as I was telling. And finally, they apply a morphology close and open, which basically gets rid of all the open ended uh, edges which are considered as noises and you can see that as like figure B and once you get rid of these noises you actually end up with a really nice outline map of the initial drawing. Uh, then they apply a, a simple float filling to this uh, uh, to this outline map in order to create the region maps as you can see in this picture D all these like different colors represent a separate region. So this is how the segmentation is done. The next step in the model creator is, uh, before actually we go to the next step, let's talk about uh, another feature of Magic Tune app. So uh, there, there are cases where you might wanna merge these auto-generated um, region maps. And to do that, there's again a simple gesture uh, the kid can just basically swipe over all the regions they want to merge together in order to create a single uh, region rather than multiple regions. So they swipe over the regions they want to merge and, and then the tool actually combines these like selected region maps uh, with the outline map. And then they finally, on, on this image, they apply a morphological erosion to remove the outline pixels so that they end up with a more concise region. Uh, and then that final result is considered to be the new region map. Uh, we will, so this actually is useful when the auto-generated model has some distortions because of having too many regions and by merging them, you are able to get smoother uh, 3D models. Then the next step. So we, so far we just created a region map, right? And then the next step is to create the actual mesh out of the, this region map. In order to do so, for each region, they actually end up calculating a distance map and distance map, as you can see in the image A, is basically a, a value for each pixel and that value is uh, calculated by that pixel's uh, shortest distance uh, to the nearest black pixel. So it's distance to the outside, basically. And when you inflate the model using that linear distance map, uh, which means the wider that map value is, the uh, the further away the pixel will end up from the initial surface when you inflate and you end up with b as you can see in b in b the end result is not very smooth and with cartoon models you usually actually prefer smooth edges rather than sharp like sharp edges so in order to smooth out this like inflation they apply a circle mapping function. So the mapping function in B, as you can see, a linear one. And in C, they actually change it with a logarithmic uh, uh, mapping function in order to end up with a smoother and 3D model. And then finally, they capture the image uh, as the texture and they just apply that texture into this final 3D model uh, back and forth. So they use that single image, both for the front side of the 3D model and the back side of the model. So this is how you get to create a single uh, 3D model. Now let's talk about the model editor. 
this part so so far what i told was the automated uh, what what is automatically happening uh, uh, by the tool and this part is the manual editor that user can use as you can see the step a the first three images in this slide talks about the merging concept i uh, just introduced a couple slides ago and you can actually see a nice example here initially the uh, the regions were segmented so that the elephant's topology was a little bit weird so the user swiped over these like regions uh, stating an intent to merge these regions to become a single region and by applying that merging uh, merging region maps algorithm i just uh, explained they end up with a smoother result and as i was saying they can also do sim like simple transformations like scaling rotation uh, and translation they can double tap to copy and further we will see they can even get to animate the 3d model uh, character i'm sorry about this uh, notification let me just get rid of it actually um, the model editor so the further part of the model editor is the character animation as i was just saying so in order to be able to animate the character it is expected from the user to put a nine out of the 20 joints that are described by the tool so you get a joint for the head two joints for shoulder hands ties and feet and you need to put these nine according to the places where you think is suitable for your model and then the tool automatically puts the remaining joints you know, through a computation and then using simple interpolation they basically actually they just animate the skeleton which animates the 3d model um, so finally in order to uh, assess their uh, results they conducted a user study and they used a very standard tool which is called nasa's task load index it's basically a set of questions where you can say how successful or how you were or like how failed the tool was from your perspective and then you and the uh, the features in this index is like mental demand how demanding it was mentally physical demand how demanding it was physically temporal demand how like rush did you felt uh, performance effort and frustration so they ended up defining four different tasks in order to uh, compare their tool with other existing tools so task rego is the task where you use rig mesh uh, one of the sketch based modeling tools to create an object task mago is using magic tune to model the same object task mag s is using using magic tune to actually alter a scene um, which is like a more complex so they're trying to assess the interactive model editor and tax task chrs using chromeville uh, to color a template page of a cartoon scene so as you can see the results here uh, the tasks uh, performed by performed at magic tune mego and magas the red and green one has higher performance values and less frustration mental demand temporal demand physical demand and effort values of which which can be should be considered as a success so they further actually ended up adding additional questions at the end of that NASA, nasa's questionnaire they ask some uh, uh, subjective questions like uh, like which one do you prefer to use to model an object with rig mesh or magic cartoon which type of models do you prefer uh, the the one that rig mesh has or magic tune has magic tune versus Cromwell, and then the final two is basically ranking the three systems according to their uh, creativity and according to uh, like your preference 
And the first in the first three questions, as you can see, Magic Tune clearly uh, over like performs better than the other two tool. And when they ask to rank these three systems to the users, they also prefer Magic Tune over the other two. Uh, sorry, that's my cat. Uh, so yeah, uh, this was the whole uh, application tool and it's like uh, evaluation. Uh, let's talk about a few limitations that the authors themselves also pointed out. So obviously this tool is more suitable for frontal view sketches uh, rather than side view sketches. When you uh, sketch a carton from non front view view, as you can see in A, you end up with some non-realistic results. And one other uh, limitation is when the image is captured through the camera with an angle rather than like directly above, they actually end up with a distorted 3D model. This should be easily, I, I think this can be easily fixed by looking at the paper's uh, edges and basically applying a skewing before going ahead with the model creation step. Um, but the A is not that easily solvable, I think. And then since they are using the same texture at the front and back of the same of the 3D model, they end up with some uh, uh, basically unwanted results where, for example, if your cartoon has a face, that face will be visible on both the front and the back of the cartoon. There's actually another paper where uh, uh, there is like there is a way to auto generate the back of the texture so that it will follow the patterns at the end, like at the sides of the uh, texture and doesn't actually end up just simply copying the texture itself. So this is also a solvable problem. Uh, so this was the whole system. Thank you so much for listening. I hope we were to do this in person, but I guess uh, given the circumstances, this is the best we can do. So have a good day.